Next is the research paper presentation by Professor Karen Evans from University of London Institute of Education, the United Kingdom. Well, thank you. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great privilege for me to be here speaking to you this afternoon. And uh, could I also thank our hosts again for the wonderful organization and hospitality in this conference. My theme this afternoon is putting knowledge to work uh, in workplace learning. If you put the term workplace learning into Google Advanced Scholar, you can get a picture of how research and inquiry in this field clusters, and also you can see how uh, it has been uh, increasing exponentially as a focus of research. The term workplace learning was actually hardly used uh, until the, the, the 1980s. Uh, but now, of course, it's capturing a whole range of forms of learning in and through work that were previously rather invisible, but at which are now, as Lynn has said, being given a, a high profile in policy and in practice and in, in new programs. You can see when you scan uh, papers in the field that uh, you get a picture of a very rich practice-based but also rather dispersed and fragmented field. There's quite a strong focus in existing research on learning processes and particularly the dynamics of competence development. That's one cluster. There's another focus which comes through quite strongly, which is on organization, about the relationships between employers and providers. There's, a, there's a, another cluster which is most concerned with equivalence of standards. Can we equate standards in, in different forms of workplace learning with national standards or higher education standards or whatever? That's another cluster. And an increasing focus on um, the environments within which workplace learning takes place and their quality. And so all of these are, are important um, areas of, of attention and activity. But uh, what I would argue is that there's a ri slight risk that uh, questions of knowledge and pedagogy, or some of you might prefer the term andragogy, uh, are being uh, rather sidelined. Um, and as a consequence, we, we don't know enough about how we can bring together subject-based or discipline-based or theory-based or whatever you choose to call it, subject-based and work-based knowledge uh, in programs involving uh, workplace learning, particularly at higher education levels or levels that equate to higher vocational learning. And uh, one of the things we've been doing at the Institute of Education in London, the University of London, is some new work that actually tries to foreground questions of knowledge and pedagogy in programs that involve uh, a substantial elements of uh, workplace learning, and particularly in new kinds of degrees and uh, workforce upskilling programs. Uh, the, the, the project I'm um, I'm referring to in this presentation is called Putting Knowledge to Work. There's actually a web link that takes you through to all of the outputs that I'll be mentioning in the course of the talk, so I hope that will be accessible through the, um, through the conference website and through the ASEM website, because I can do no more today than give you a flavor uh, of what the work has done. Uh, the research was sponsored um, by the London Chamber of uh, Commerce and Industry Commercial Education Trust, it's a charitable fund, and also by the UK uh, Economic and Social Research Council. Now this, this question that I've got up here, this, this challenge, uh, is by no means uh, a new question. It's a very long-standing question. How best to integrate different forms of learning, uh, different kinds of learning, in programs that involve substantial uh, amounts of workplace learning. There have been many attempts down the years to tackle these questions in the, in the context of 
all kinds of apprenticeship programs, in all kinds of vocational education and training programs, and in continuing professional development. Now, in, in 2009, the landscapes of workplace learning are changing very fast, um, and whole new families of programs uh, uh, um, are coming forward, uh, including new kinds of workforce development programs. And so these challenges of integration, uh, far from being resolved or solved, uh, are intensifying. And this is why we uh, decided to give uh, um, new attention to this to see if we could introduce some fresh thinking about ways forward. Approaches to these challenges in the past have typically focused on how learning can be transferred from one setting to another. And this is most often thought of uh, uh, as transfer from theory into practice. And um, attempts at transfer are continually dogged or impeded or made difficult uh, by the assumed abstract nature of theory in relation to the assumed real nature of practice. And so the debate goes round and round about how you can relate and integrate theory and practice. Well, we wanted to step out of that particular cycle of argument. And so we've, uh, we've, we've, um, we've developed some new ideas that go beyond the idea of transfer. Um, in doing that, we've asked why uh, it's always been so difficult to design programs that effectively integrate subject-based, discipline-based, and work-based forms of learning. And um, we believe that the difficulty stems from the fact that these, these, uh, form, uh, these t um, areas of learning involve forms of knowledge that are characterized by different logics. Um, the nature of the knowledge is different. You, in, in programs that, 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 uh, that in, incorporate a large element of workplace learning alongside subject-based or classroom-based learning, you have a mix of disciplinary knowledge, work process knowledge, uh, pro um, professional uh, knowledge of different kinds, legal knowledge, procedural knowledge, personal knowledge, the sorts of knowledge that Lynn was talking about in her presentation, the kind of tacit knowledge that comes from life experience of the people who are engaged in, the, the adults who are engaged in the learning. And uh, these uh, kinds, different kinds of knowledge are all in a kind of mix uh, in, in these programs. They're in a mix in all kinds of programs, but they are in a particularly complex uh, set of um, uh, uh, relationships in programs that incorporate workplace learning. And um, there are different values also ascribed to these different types of knowledge, which depends on where you stand in relation to them. So uh, I was interested to read a paper recently in the UK that talked about um, student nurses. I think one of the earlier presentations referred to nurses was this, this Lynn again. And this paper, written by um, a, um, a, a nurse in a, an advanced nursing journal, talks about how student nurses in the UK experience what she termed a disintegrated learning environment. That's quite a strong term. They experience a disintegrated learning environment because of the different values given to different types of knowledge by academic nurses compared to practice nurses. So this is not like the dis making broad distinction between academe, the world of academe and the world of the professions. This is within the body of, of nurse people trained and in the occupational field of nursing. There is a huge difference in the value ascribed to different knowledge by, between those who are academic nurses and those who are practice-based nurses. And this problem uh, runs through, uh, th runs through uh, so many uh, kinds of, of programs. So our new and different pr approach has um, tried to move beyond questions of uh, trying to transfer knowledge as though that were in some way unproblematic to analyzing in a more active way how knowledge is put to work in different contexts. And uh, I think this perhaps refers a little to what Arnett was talking about this morning. Uh, in, in the, I think you were talking about how trying to understand how knowledge is put to work um, in, in different contexts. 
For the theorists among you, I'm not going to say a great amount of, about theory, except to say that we started uh, in using these terms contextualized and recontextualized. We started with some ideas from Bernstein um, uh, and also from Van Ers, um, who's a theorist who works in the, the workplace context, and we expanded both uh, of these substantially to take in uh, work practices and learner engagement. Our new approach, in essence, concentrates on different forms of knowledge and the ways in which these are contextualized and recontextualized as people move between different sites of learning and practice. These are awkward words. They're awkward even for native speakers, but uh, I can't think of a better expression at the moment. And this is a, an approach which um, we think captures the nature of knowledge itself, which, um, which also captures employment practices which shape and are shaped by knowledge. And it also takes into uh, account the ways in which learners, workers, um, uh, uh, make sense of these contexts, personalize their learning, and develop their professional and vocational identities. I'm going to explain a little bit more what, what uh, I mean by uh, recontextualization. A key idea behind this work is that all knowledge has a context in which it was originally generated. There's no such thing as context-free knowledge. Um, contexts are often thought of as settings or places, but contexts, in the way that we're using it, extends to schools of thought, to traditions and norms of practice, and to life experiences in which knowledge of different kinds is generated and used, including the everyday context that Lynn was talking about. And for this knowledge to be put to work in, in a different context from that in which it originated, it has to be recontextualized in different ways. And this is the process we have tried to understand and explain better. And there are four crucial areas in which knowledge has to be recontextualized in order to be put to work effectively and efficiently and they're summarized here. There's putting knowledge to work in the program design environment involves content recontextualization. I'll unpack these in a minute. Putting knowledge to work in the teaching and facilitating environment involves pedagogic recontextualization. Putting it to work in the workplace environment involves workplace recontextualization. And then there's this, uh, this, this point at which the learner or the worker or the employee brings everything together themselves, that understands what, how all the learning fits together, and that's the process we've called LR, learner recontextualization. So the first one of these, putting knowledge to work in the program design environment. Uh, this is the process by which codified knowledge is selected and recast for particular learners as part of a program design. And in professional and vocational education, it involves selecting and organizing knowledge for the demands of professional and vocational practice. So in, in, the, in, the, um, in the context of professional and vocational education, this includes work process knowledge. As I've said, it includes procedural knowledge. Um, it includes legal knowledge and possibly job-specific knowledge in, in very highly tailored programs. And uh, these, as I've said, these different types of knowledge differ fundamentally and are not in easily related. So in an example I'm going to come on to, I've got an example of a new program for aspiring aircraft maintenance engineers um, where a, a new program had to be developed involving a cooperation between KLM, uh, KLM UK and Kingston University, that's the Royal, uh, Royal Dutch Airline. Um, uh, in uh, trying to develop a new program in which licensing requirements that met European aircraft safety um, standards were meshed into, into uh, a, a degree framework involving a very large element of workplace learning. And uh, I'll talk about how various knowledge had to be recontextualized to make that work. But in particular, in, in when we're looking at putting knowledge to work in the program design environment, we have to make distinctions between vertical knowledge features um, when, where we move towards different degrees of abstraction 
uh, and vert horizontal knowledge features where uh, the learner moves towards us making a series of practical connections. And these two, vertical and horizontal connections, are always being made um, in the knowledge uh, that is in play. Putting knowledge to work in the teaching and facilitating environment, here uh, disciplinary knowledge is combined with practice-based knowledge and local company knowledge, and pedagogic recontextualization takes place as decisions are made about organizing into learning activities, options, modules for the purposes of teaching and learning. And uh, sometimes this is, this is treated as though it's a purely technical matter, but it never is. Uh, what, uh, uh, the, these decisions are always heavily influenced by the practitioner's assumptions about what constitutes good learning experiences and worthwhile outcomes. So your supervisor in the workplace may have totally different views about what constitutes good learning experiences and worthwhile outcomes from your classroom-based practitioner. Uh, another example of where the tensions in the nursing example I gave you um, uh, spring from. Putting knowledge to work in the workplace environment. Um, this is where we need to, to focus our attention much more than, we, than has been done in the past. Workplace recontextualization takes place through the workplace practices and activities that generate and support knowledge development. It also takes place through mentorship, coaching, and all the other kinds of arrangements you find in workplace that enable learning to take place. And these practices are fundamental to learners, not just learning what is already known, but to learners beginning to vary and modify existing workplace practices, and to um, uh, eventually working with experienced others in teams uh, to change them. So there's also a knowledge generation element uh, that is sometimes not fully recognized in workplace recontextualization. And then finally, uh, and most importantly, what the learner makes of all of these processes. And what learners make of these processes varies um, you know, according to their personal characteristics, the group, team, or the cohort they're in, what scope for action they have. And it takes place through the strategies the learners themselves use to bring together different types of knowledge and experience. And that in itself sometimes involves learners in creation of new knowledge, insights, and activities in changing workplace places. And learner recontextualization is also critical uh, to the development of a professional or vocational identity. It's the, process through, it, it, um, it's the process through which people think and feel themselves into a professional and vocational identity. And this is not just for new entrants, uh, but for adults as well who are changing role. For the adults, for example, who have been frontline workers and then become managers or team leaders, this is, they are continuously evolving and changing their professional and vocational identity, and that is also part of the uh, learner recontextualization process because the learners, as with you and, you and I, are always bringing together all of these different kinds of knowledge um, and, and using in, in these ways whether consciously or unconsciously. So the idea of having this framework, these types of recontextualization, is not just for the sake of having, having a, doing an analysis. It's not just a, a theoretical analysis. But it's actually to provide an intellectual tool, something that people can use to uh, analyze programs, practices, even reanalyze previous research findings. Um, to look at what are the recontextualization, knowledge recontextualization processes going on in this particular program practice or, or, or whatever. And with the particular aim of m trying to maximize uh, the linkages that are made between work-based and subject-based knowledge, and, I, and with the particular purpose of finding better ways of putting knowledge to work to the benefit of students, uh, in, uh, learners, workers, employers, uh, and providers. Because if you look at the way in which many programs offer, operate, they are actually very, very inefficient uh, in the ways in which knowledge is actually used and put to work. There's a huge amount of not lost knowledge that goes on, that I'm sure you can identify. Um, I'm going to skip over that. Uh, so we ask, how can chains of recontextualization be better forged in ways that meet the expectations and requirements of, of learners, employees, uh, and the other stakeholders 
in the process. And I'm just going to illustrate this um, as far as I've got time with, with uh, two examples from um, the UK. The first one is with reference to a program in um, aircraft engineering. I've already just made passing reference to this with uh, KLM UK Engineering with Kingston University. FD stands for foundation degree. This is um, a new family of uh, degree level programs in the UK in which workplace learning plays a very central role. They're available to young people and adults, mainly for people at work. And um, uh, they and equivalent programs, such as the, the second example here with Commerce Bank um, uh, in London, uh, they are both programs where uh, participants can exit after the equivalent of two years uh, with a, something that's called a foundation degree that meets industry standards, uh, but also has, uh, um, has, uh, re is recognized as providing a foundation for progression to a full bachelor's degree. That is a requirement of any program of this kind that's developed. Um, both of these examples are very European, as you can see. One's Royal Dutch Airlines, been its, U, its UK presence. And uh, the second example uh, is a trainee program, um, which is offered uh, by collaboration between Commerce Bank uh, and the European College of Business and Management in London. Um, Com Commerce Bank is a German bank. Um, it's, all, it's almost, this, this example is almost a version of the uh, German dual system, but contextualized to work in the UK context, which is in itself uh, quite interesting. Um, I didn't use a UK bank example. They're in rather a lot of trouble at the moment. Commerce Bank is in rather better shape, I think. Uh, so, um, Again, the idea, chain, using the idea of chains of recontextualization to pinpoint practices that are effective or potentially effective in putting knowledge to work in particular employment sectors and contexts. How can we analyze these from a knowledge point of view in order to strengthen chains, journeys of knowledge backwards and forwards across sites of learning? Well, aircraft engineering. Um, as so I said, the aim here uh, was to mesh licensing requirements of the European Aircraft Safety Agency uh, into a degree level program. That's never been done before. It's been done in vocational programs, but it's never been done at degree level before. So at the program um, at design level, there had to be a substantial pro process of knowledge recontextualization in that the partners, both KLM UK and Kingston University really had to rethink their, their, their knowledge logics in relation to the interdependency of academic and work-based learning um, uh, according to criteria of the incremental steps uh, that, that um, uh, participants needed to work through uh, on the, uh, to working towards being able to work on the aircraft as a whole system and also the uh, paramount importance of the safety features. So the program design had to be such that um, uh, any gaps in the uh, aircraft maintenance engineer's knowledge had to be surfaced as they worked through the program at a very early stage in order that they can, could be remedied. And uh, I mean, there's a very obvious reason for that. I mean, I would not want to get on an aircraft which had been maintained by people who had gaps, significant gaps in their knowledge, and I'm sure you wouldn't. So the safety feature was absolutely paramount. So um, these university and KLM UK partners really had to come together to design a program which actually came out in this shape, which is very different from the shape of a conventional degree program. A conventional degree program would tend to start with a broad base and then narrow to an individual, very individualized project at the top, so it'd be more like a triangle. But this, uh, this sh uh, shape of program came out of this knowledge recontextualization. You start narrow, with, um, well, you might think maths and science are broad, but this is maths and science elements selected from maths and science that have particular applications to UK maintenance, uh, aircraft uh, maintenance um, issues. And uh, you then uh, work up into, um, uh, uh, um, up to, towards the top of the program, the overarching element is working on aircraft as a whole system. Um, which is the level at which you complete the foundation degree and are ready um, for, for um, uh, supervised practice. 
uh, for, uh, in, in, on real aircraft um, and uh, provides the basis for progression to a bachelor's degree. The subject knowledge in this program is obvious. It's physics and maths um, as it relates to engineering. There's also law as it relates to aviation legislation. And there's social psychology, human psychology, human factors. Uh, these are the, this is the knowledge base that had to be meshed with the know-how and procedural work process knowledge that is embedded in the licensing requirements for uh, aircraft maintenance engineers. So uh, one of the key, re key recontextualizing practices in here was what we call um, a gradual release principle in the program. So there were iterative movements between theory and practice and incremental increases in complexity that we term gradual release. So in this case, this what we call pedagogic recontextualization, in that maths and physics are priorities, are prioritized, with teachers in the early stages of the program demonstrating their uses in aircraft maintenance problems. It then goes into practice-based elements um, that involve providing learners with experiences that are necessary to make theory and practice connections. And then the program moves into a systems and skills modules, um, which involves development of knowledge of the aircraft as a whole system with simulated and real life opportunities to put the developing knowledge to work. And in the operational environment, uh, learners uh, are, um, are uh, de develop um, their capabilities by having to do things in, uh, in, in decreasing amounts of time and with increasing amounts of unpredictability. So actually, whereas um, you know, this, is, this is sometimes being in the operational environment is sometimes regarded in rather a loose way as being about experience, you know, this is actually very highly structured. Um, so uh, through these means, you have strengthening and development of knowledge through extended time and, and exposure with familiar equipment. Uh, um, participants uh, are in, um, allowed to make mistakes in a controlled environment, closely supervised, so they can learn from those mistakes. They move from predictable to more unpredictable tasks. They get feedback tailored to both workplace and academic criteria to the point where they're operating under time and uh, the unpredictability pressures of the operator, operational environment. And it's very important that that takes place in a gradual way because if they're exposed too early to the press time pressures and the unpredictability of the full operational environment, that can be very, very negative um, uh, for them. Um, and gradual release within the operational environment. This involves people and activities that are, are, are all involved in knowledge recontextualization practices. You have key people op op occupying boundary roles, helping um, participants, helping learners, employees to, um, to uh, move their knowledge backwards and forwards across boundaries. There's work shadowing, there's called mating up, there's peer support, planning incremental responsibilities, debriefing focuses on developing confidence in putting their knowledge to work. And there's a key role here for what we term the industry educator as a knowledge broker, taking a knowledge perspective, industry educators who've come up through the industry and have a broad um, uh, involvement in, in uh, the edu educational uh, enterprise uh, can act as knowledge brokers. The, the banking example I'm go not going to talk about in great length, just give you a flavor. You can look at uh, all of these are detailed exemplars and case studies that are, can be accessed through the web link. That's, this is the shape of the program. As I said, this is Commerce Bank and London Euro, Euro College. Uh, German U dual system recontextualized to the UK. Um, for new entrants, uh, it is for new entrants that have the status of employees at Commerce Bank. And uh, these new entrants are, on the whole, recruited very selectively, selectively from underprivileged schools in London. So they, they choose um, uh, people who've, who've got good grades from London schools, but they, they've got good grades because they've been very determined and very re resilient because they're from underprivileged schools. Um, 
And uh, this one's an example because it is, this one's an interesting example because it is not like the aircraft engineering, which was a fully integrated program, but uh, this is a, a program where two parallel, no two uh, different knowledge logics operate in parallel. There's the college-based knowledge logic operates quite separately from a workplace knowledge uh, logic, and. Um, re Recontextualization of knowledge takes place through a set of practices that connect the two, uh, largely through assessment. So it's not necessary for all aspects of programs to be fully integrated. You can have different knowledge logics operating in parallel when it's dif difficult to combine them, providing there are re recontextualizing practices that enable the crossovers. So in this program, the college-based part of the program would have been law and economics, business finance, sector knowledge, modules being sequenced flexibly um, with the potential to go on to a final honors year. Um, assessment here was used to promote a chain of recontextualization. Work-based knowledge came from actually doing jobs uh, in the bank. Um, but uh, here, um, there was a, it's a cultural feature, there was a very explicit uh, pedagogy of work that goes way beyond business as usual or just you know, being exposed to the work process. Again, this is quite Germanic. The bank saw themselves as having a duty to train and took these aspects very uh, seriously. So actually structured the, work, uh, the workplace um, learning in order that um, people learned through a balance of doing routine tasks and also doing tasks that stretched them. They did different kinds of work in rotation. They uh, engaged in planned expansion of their workplace knowledge. This was all facilitated by industry educators, highly qualified and experienced people who had a kind of participative memory of, of having come up through the industry themselves. And assessment brought the two sides of the program together by using expanded and contextualized assignments that um, that, for example, um, brought, uh, brought workplace reports and so on into, into the assessment process in a very active sort of way. But most importantly, by placing a lot of responsibility on the learner, on the employee, um, to, uh, to um, have an inquiring approach, to find out, to use the resources uh, that were being made available to them. So assessment had support from both.